So moving to a new area can be extremely overwhelming. I mean, all of the considerations that you have to take into account. What are the best neighborhoods? What are the best places to live? Is this the right area to live for me? That's just one aspect of it. And then you get into the lifestyle components, which are really all about the pros and cons, which we're gonna cover here today. And this is one of my favorite videos to make. As a matter of fact, this is our third straight annual pros and cons video of living in Tampa, Florida, 2024 edition. I'm so excited to get into it with you guys today. And I know exactly how overwhelming all of this can feel because a little over five years ago, we sold almost everything we owned, packed up all of our belongings into a pickup truck and a eight foot U-Haul and made the 1200 mile trek from Detroit, Michigan down to Tampa, Florida and have not looked back since then. And we have learned a lot. And my goal here today is to share with you the five things that we absolutely love about living here in Tampa, Florida, and the five things we could go without. Um, I'm so excited to share those with you. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed realtor and a team leader here with the True Living Group, where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. If that interests you, don't hesitate to reach out. All of my contact information is listed down below. Now let's get right into this list. So the very first pro on our list is the one that brings almost everyone south, and that is the the weather. I mean, we are incredibly spoiled here in the greater Tampa Bay area, you know, with almost 250 days of sunshine on average. St. Petersburg, Florida is called Sunshine City, for goodness sake. You know, our winter temperatures are extremely mild. We average right around 70 degrees from November through April, which is unbelievable. May averages right around 80 degrees. I mean, we are so spoiled when it comes to the weather. And there is something about the sun that makes you, it just puts you in a good mood. And I found that when we made the relocation, you know, we moved from an area that had very long winters. They were gray and dreary, and there would literally be months when we didn't see the sun. And maybe that's not you. Maybe you're considering moving from an area like Los Angeles, California, you know, maybe Texas or Arizona, which I can completely understand um, how that may not be the most attractive thing for you. But the consistency of the sunshine, even though it says that we average right around 250 days a year of sunshine, it, there are very very few days that we that go by where we actually don't see the sun and it pops its head out at one point or another I mean it is very rare when we go two to three days consistently of not seeing the sun and that is a huge huge pro when it comes to moving to the area. People ask me all the time, Juan, they say, what is the difference between, you know, back home and living here in Tampa now? And I tell everybody the same thing. You do not have to shovel sunshine. The second pro on our list is jobs and employment. And this is an area that has really grown over the last three years, really. Um, but over the last five years, it's definitely been chugging along. And with all of the great people who decided to pack up from another state and choose Tampa as their home, you know, it's not just been people, it's been companies as well. They've made the decision to relocate to, to the state of Florida and this Tampa proper to, you know, bring opportunity here. And, you know, Tampa's known as the unofficial tech hub of Florida. It's still got a long way to grow compared to things like Silicon Valley, which I wouldn't even put it in that same category, but it is growing dramatically, leaps and bounds in areas like cybersecurity, um, and tech jobs specifically. And, you know, when it comes to jobs and unemployment, you know, we're sitting at right around 3.1 or 3.2% in unemployment versus nationally, which is about 3.7%. So, you know, we're looking for people to fill these spots because so many people continue to move to the area. Now, the type of jobs you have in the area, you know, the, these different categories are typically banking, defense, government jobs. We've also got uh, healthcare, education, of course, um, and a lot of opportunity in tech also. So those are what's really driving this economy right now. Our health systems like Baycare Health System, Advent Health System, Orlando Health System is actually moving to Tampa also. You've got Tampa General. When it comes to education, of course, there's all the public high schools, uh, pre-K, um, uh, kindergarten, and uh, junior high schools, but you also have the University of South Florida. You've got the University of Tampa and St. Pete College, just a few notables there that are really driving this demand. When it comes to defense, you've got MacDill Air Force Base, we've got Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Honeywell, uh, CA. I mean, all of the major defense contractors have a home base here in Tampa as well, and it is really driving the economy. 
As a matter of fact, Tampa has attracted more high income earners, more people earning over $200,000 a year into the state more than any other state in the entire country. It's been absolutely incredible to watch the growth here in Tampa. We still got a lot of catching up to do in some areas in terms of salaries. I would be, get really intentional about your research on that. Healthcare is one of them. Our healthcare costs less. And I always tell everybody this, if our healthcare costs less, it's because they're paying somebody less. That's just the way it works. So be mindful of that. And it's going to depend uh, specifically on what your discipline is. So look into those. Um, we're also we're more than willing to share all of our resources we have. I try to link a bunch of that stuff down in the description below. So I hope that helps. Now the third pro on our list is the one that captured me and my family's heart. Our beaches are absolutely world-class. As a matter of fact, they get ranked as some of the best beaches in America almost every year. From Clearwater Beach, which has been recognized multiple times as the best beach in America, St. Pete Beach, Madeira Beach, Treasure Island. If you travel a little bit further south here in the greater Tampa Bay area, you get down to Anna Maria Island, Longboat Key, Siesta Key, just some incredible beaches that are absolutely stunning. I mean, here in Pinellas County, just west of uh, greater Tampa Bay, we have uh, over 27 miles of beautiful white sugar sand beaches. And these are what really stole our hearts, y'all. You know, we take our kids down there, we go see a sunset, we go play football, we go hang out on the beach. The kids meet, um, you know, on a two Tuesday to go hang out together and play in the water. You've got boaters out there, Kaya. I mean, there's just so many things to really enjoy. You'll see the dolphin, you'll see stingray, you'll see sea turtles. I mean, like, it's so hard not to love it. And most importantly, you just get that abundant sunshine, the smell of salty air. Our beaches are just absolutely gorgeous. You're gonna love them. The number four pro on our list is activities and entertainment. I mean, there is so much to do here. When we moved, I did not recognize how many things I could actually be doing on a daily basis. And it's it can be overwhelming to be honest with you, but whether you're a fisherman, you know, an angler, whether you're just a beach lover and you like taking strolls, you're a runner, you're a biker, you're a walker, you're a kayaker, you're a paddleboarder, you're a kite surfer, um, you just love being on the boat, you like jet skiing. Um, there are so many different things to do here in the greater Tampa Bay area. I mean, we've got cycle cross and BMX tracks here as well. And just to the north of us up in the springs there, you know, you can go up the Wiki watchy and you can see a mermaid show. I mean, there's just so many things to do. Right now it's in the winter and we've got a, a, a place called Snowcat Ridge where you can actually go sledding. They've got snow indoors, it's cold. I, it's very unique in that respect. And you know, that's just a few things in terms to do of activities. Our sports teams obviously are world-class. We've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which are making the playoffs again. The Tampa Bay Rays who have done a great job in baseball recently over the years. And of course the Tampa Bay Lightning who have won multiple Stanley Cups and continue to just be a great hockey team. We've also got um, professional soccer here with the Rowdies. And another really cool feature of the area is uh, spring training. And if you're a baseball fan, like you're a baseball nut, we are so spoiled. Up in Dunedin, we've got the Blue Jays. In Clearwater, we've got the Phillies do their spring training there. Of course, we've got the Yankees in Tampa. The Tigers are over in Lakeland, which is just a short drive, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, depending on where you live. Um, if you head a little bit further south, you've got the Orioles down in Sarasota and the Pirates in Bradenton. I mean, there are so many different opportunities to plug into activities and entertainment, and that's just to name a few. Depending on what type of lifestyle you're trying to accomplish, I assure you there is something here in the greater Tampa Bay for everyone. Now, the fifth pro on our list is real estate and investment opportunities. And there is no secret that Florida is very business friendly and that our real estate has been propped up for years by people who like to invest in the area. You know, one of the things about the state that is very attractive attractive to people is the fact that we don't have a state income tax. And that, that can be very attractive, especially for those high income earners. Another reason why you've seen so many of them migrate to the state. With remote work, if you do not have to work in a specific state that may be taxing you like crazy, then Florida might be a really good option for you. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. But, you know, look at people like athletes. They've been doing this for years. When they would buy a home, right, maybe they ha they were a sports athlete playing for the, the San Francisco 49ers out in California. And they buy a home in the state of Florida and they make it their primary residence for six months and one day. And now all of a sudden they don't have to pay a state income tax, which is absolutely incredible. And you've seen this for years. Add into that, you've got uh, retirees who will buy a 
second home or make it a full-time move here, but investors love to buy things like Airbnbs, condos, townhomes, because they know, especially near the coast, that those are gonna be great investment opportunities from a rental perspective. So our real estate market has always been pretty strong and stable outside of the great economic crash that we had in, in 08. Um, but overall, people love to invest in real estate in the state of Florida. Just look at our politicians, they've been doing it forever. And with low taxes, that makes it very attractive. Having no state income tax, the state of Florida has attracted more high income earners in the last few years than any other state. As a matter of fact, last year, we attracted more um, uh, new residents that earn over $200,000 a year than any other state in the country. And that's saying a lot, y'all. So keep that in perspective. But when it comes to the real estate values here in the greater Tampa Bay area, the median sales price for a single family home is right around $430,000. Now that's just a little bit higher than the US, which is right around $408,000. Now it, it's been kind of hanging around in that zone, which is pretty interesting. That, that tells you that we're very affordable, especially if you look at coastal regions, because a lot of the coastal regions are very expensive. You know, on average, Miami costs about $150,000 more to get the same size house. So this is just something to keep in consideration. And you start looking at areas like Boston, uh, San Diego, Los Angeles. I mean, these are entirely different markets and night and day in terms of real estate values. And that's another reason why people decided to pack up from those areas and move here when they got the opportunity. People were selling homes. We'd have clients reach out to us from California and they were selling a home for 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. They would sell that home. Uh, maybe they had a mortgage of four or five hundred thousand dollars left, but they would sell that home and with the proceeds, that five hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars, they would come to Tampa and pay cash. And that is really another reason why our real estate values continue to climb. I mean, just this month, Zillow ranked Tampa as one of the top 10 hottest real estate markets in the country. We're on that list for the second time in three years. And that is not by mistake. Our real estate values are holding strong and continuing to climb. You know, you look at areas like St. Pete that is up um, almost 12% year over year. You look at Clearwater also up significantly. You know, you got areas like Wesley Chapel and Parrish and Lakewood Ranch that are growing, obviously Sarasota. I mean, there is a lot to love about here, but again, business friendly, real estate friendly. There's no reason why we're winning here when it comes to real estate values. And if you do have any questions about real estate here locally, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below. There's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you. I'd be more than happy to jump on there, try to match the ideal community to your ideal lifestyle. Um, we're here to be of service. Do not hesitate to reach out. All right, Juan, now that you shared all the good, it's time to get into those cons that you were talking about. And y'all, I want to share transparently because listen, you know, here it's not perfect here in Tampa. And just like where you live, there's always something that may bother you, right? Or isn't perfect. And my goal here is to share that. And I'm also going to get really deep as a bonus. We're going to talk about crime. Okay. So I want to get into that um, because it is definitely one of the questions that people ask all the time. They say, hey, what is going on with crime? What do I need to be aware of? And I'm happy to share that stuff with you. But the very first con on our list was also the very first pro, and that is weather. And when it comes to the temperature here in the summer in Florida, it is a very unique animal all into its own. As a matter of fact, it was described to me in a very unique way, especially here on the Gulf Coast. Um, I took a trip the very first uh, winter we moved down because we moved in December of 2018. So we hadn't experienced a Gulf Coast summer yet. And I went over to the Fort Lauderdale area in January and I was teaching and uh, I met a guy and he said, um, oh yeah, I used to live in that area where you live now. And I said, well, that's really cool. Tell me about it. He goes, have you ever lived through a Gulf Coast summer before? And I said, no, why? <laughs> he goes, it's like waking up to a golden retriever breathing three inches from your face. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, it can't be that bad. And oh boy, he was not far off. And um, let me just put it this way. Uh, in the summer, in the state of Florida in general, um, you have two seasons. You have indoor season and outdoor season. <laughs> and what you'll find is, you know, those average temperatures from July, August, and September, they are 90 degrees, okay? So people tend to get up, get their lawn work, their yard work done extremely early. You'll see them on their walks earlier. And then they typically don't come back out of the house or the air-conditioned places till, you know, right around dusk. And this is normal, right? At sunset, people start to get back out. They start, you know, getting active again because it is warm. And y'all, those temperatures at night aren't much relief. We can see temps 83, 84, 85 degrees at night. It is some of the strangest thing in the world. Now, would I trade 
the 90 degree temperatures for three straight months, that oppressive heat for six months of gray, dreary, snowy, you know, no, not, I will sweat every day of the week. I will change twice a day if I have to, shower two times. We got a pool for a reason, right? Like I do that every single day because it is worth the trade for me. And then the other seven and a half, eight months out of the year, the weather is incredible. Y'all, our windows were open today. I mean, that is a glorious thing. But listen, if you cannot stand humid temperatures and oppressive heat for three months, you need to call somewhere else home during that time period. And that's why we have what we refer to as a lot of snowbirds, um, seasonal ownership, right? They come down and usually by Mother's Day, they're taking off and heading back up north or wherever else they live in, in, the, in the country or on the globe. Um, and then they return somewhere around Thanksgiving. It's very, very annual and very seasonal in that respect. So the number two con on this list is bugs, wildlife, and pest, <laughs> because you are going to have them. When you move to an area that does not have a frost, that does not get cold, and does not kill off wildlife, you are going to um, get exposed to a lot of different things. Um, and this is a question that I get asked on every single Zoom call or phone call. People always ask, you know, tell me about the alligators. And y'all, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've only seen a few alligators living here in five years. Alligator sightings for me are pretty uncommon, but I don't live next to an open body of fresh water. Um, and for me and my family, we have made the decision that if, is it, if it is an open body of fresh water and it is uh, deeper than you can see in it, we don't go in it, period right? Because that belongs to the dinosaurs. Um, and what I'm referring to is, is alligators. We're not messing around with that, but we live in, in a neighborhood and the five years we've been here, not a single person has told us that we, they've seen an alligator walking through their yard or down the street and we've never seen one either. So while I understand that's concern, it's really not that big of a deal. You kind of know where they're going to be. Um, you know, they will um, venture into other places. You'll see that on like those Florida man memes. It does happen, but those are typically areas that are more rural and then around more lakes. Listen, I know somebody's going to send me a, a comment. Hey, I had one here. I get it. But in five years, we've never seen one. So I understand that. Now, there are lizards that run around everywhere. I've only seen one snake in my yard in five years. That's pretty good. We would see gardener snakes in our, our yard all the time up north. So that, like, that's not out of the ordinary for me. Um, the mosquitoes, we live close to the beach, so they're really not bad at all. When you get out in those more rural areas that are in wetlands, you're absolutely you're going to have problems with them. And the real bugs that you need to be concerned with here are the no see -ums. And they are exactly what I just said. They are very, very difficult to see, almost so that you can't see them, hence the name no see -em. And those little buggers bite, and they bite hard, so keep that in perspective. And then um, the other thing you have to keep in mind is we have what's referred to as palmetto bugs. That is a very fancy marketing term for a cockroach, and they're huge. They're like this big. When we first took possession of this house, it had been empty for a month. And we moved down here, um, you know, we moved down in the winter, and I, you know, I'm not used to seeing any kind of uh, pest activity in my household. We call the exterminator right away. We just won't deal with that. Um, and then when we moved in here, my daughters come screaming out of their bedroom um, like the very first night. And they're like, oh my God, there's a huge bug in there. And I went in the room, you know, just thinking I was gonna go kill a bug like any other dad would um, in any other day. And when I walked in the room, there was this giant palmetto bug. I mean, the thing probably was three and a half inches long on the floor. And I'm looking at this thing and I'd seen them before outside, but like I have never been face to face with one. And I also didn't know that they fly. And this bug, as I stepped towards it, took flight it opened up its wings. And if you've ever seen um, uh, The Matrix, where that scene where Neo is fighting Orpheus and he's learning that he knows Kung Fu and he jumps up in the air and the whole world slows down, that is what happened in my life. And I went screaming out of that room like a little girl. <laughs> And I went out in the garage and got loaded up, you know, got the uh, the tennis racket or whatever it was to try to kill this thing. It looked like John Candy from The Great Outdoors, man. Like, I was not having it. And I had to go take this bug down so my little girls could go to bed. But boy, what an education. Now, um, you know, we have since learned how to take care of all that stuff. And, um, you know, they the cool thing about those types of bugs is they actually nest in the trees, not indoors. Um, so keep that in mind. But we have all kinds of pests. So just keep that in perspective when it comes to living in Florida. You are going to see things 
things. Are they that big of a deal? No, get pest control. You can overcome any of that stuff. Um, don't leave food laying out. Those things are obvious, but they really don't try to come in the house um, until the rainy season in the summer when it's raining a ton, then they'll try to push in a little bit more. Um, just be diligent about the pest control and you'll be just fine. The third con on our list is traffic. And this one can be quite controversial depending on who you are and what you do for a living because drive times in the greater Tampa Bay area are all over the map. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna jump into the map here in a second and kind of walk you through that. But just to give some perspective, nationally, we rank 30th in terms of worst congestion. That is not bad. But if you live here, and let's just say you lived here for the last you know, 30 years or 20 years, then what you see today definitely feels like total chaos and madness. And it's fair, right, in terms of the amount of congestion. But that's not the real, the real issue here in Florida. Um, in Florida, we have some serious challenges in terms of you know, the quality of driver on the road. I'm just gonna be quite frank. Now, this is completely anecdotal. Go do all the research. I looked up who has the, the highest insurance rates. Florida is third, all right? So they're not the most expensive, but boy, it does feel that way. Um, and a big part of that is the quality of the driver. Like I said, we have drivers that bring habits from all over the world to the state of Florida. We do have more retirees in the state of Florida than a lot of other areas. And I'm not saying someone who is retired can't drive, but when it comes to high insurance rates, seniors who are well into their years and um, new drivers have the highest insurance rates. And that's for a reason, because statistically, they make the most mistakes and they have the most accidents. And listen, y'all, if you've lived in Florida or you've ever been to Florida, it is nothing to see someone cross four lanes of traffic to try to make a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn. And I know people do that all over the country, but I've traveled, I used to travel for a living and I see more crazy crap happening on the road here than anywhere else. And as a matter of fact, the first three years that we lived here, our vehicles were hit each one of those years. And two of the three times they were parked. And again, this is my story, it's my anecdote, right? But like, listen, the quality of the driver here is very interesting. You gotta keep your head on a, sw a swivel. I say that driving here is a, um, a full contact sport. You really gotta have your head on a swivel. Now, am I afraid to go drive? No. Do I need to be much more diligent in the state of Florida versus everywhere else I've drove? It feels that way. And again, that's my perspective. Again, we rank 30th in congestion. That's a ways off, but if you've lived here, it feels like it's insane, um, you know? So I understand that. But what I also wanna do is kind of give you guys some insights on some drive time. So let's jump in the map really quick. So let's get into some of these drive times. I'm gonna base everything off the Tampa International Airport. Um, you could do downtown, but this is mostly everybody's hub, whether they're traveling in or traveling out. It's a great location. It's on the west shore here of Tampa. It just makes sense to kind of look at it that way. All right, now, um, at the time of this recording, it's roughly around eight o'clock PM. So um, this is clean driving. This is why I wanted to do this at this time um, and talk about some of the stresses you'll see. now. Um, from Tampa International Airport to Clearwater Beach, as you can see, it's a 31 minute drive, which is a great drive. From Tampa International Airport to St. Pete Beach at this time, it's a 32 minute drive, really convenient. From Tampa International to Indian Rocks Beach, um, which is the furthest western point of Pinellas County and the greater Tampa Bay, that is 35 minutes. Um, if you're gonna head up to Wesley Chapel, which is a really popular area right now, growing like crazy, we've done lots of videos on them, that's a 30 minute drive as well, right now to Tampa International Airport. If we were gonna head over to Apollo Beach, which is um, the east, southeast side of the bay, which is becoming more popular as well, that is a 30 minute drive time. If you're gonna head from Tampa International to um, Sarasota, as an example, which is not right around the corner, but if you're gonna do that, that's an hour drive exactly. Okay, so I'm trying to give you some perspective here. Let's do Lakewood Ranch as well, because that, that one is extremely popular, and then I'll also do Parish as well. So Lakewood Ranch is a 52 minutes, and Parish, and the reason I'm using these as examples is because so many people drive to these areas. So Parish is 46 minutes, and let, last but not least, downtown St. Pete. So St. Petersburg, that's a 20 minute drive. Oh, and last but not least, let's do Orlando because this is the one um, that I think throws people off. So from Tampa International Airport to um, Orlando, Florida, you're looking at about an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, now like I said, all of those drive times are based upon not having any challenges on the highway. And the one thing you can guarantee is if you are headed out in peak traffic in Tampa, you are going to experience 
some challenges, okay? So, you know, what I want you to just kind of wrap your mind around, if you're going to, you know, to drive anywhere in the greater Tampa Bay area and it's during peak hours, you know, those 30 minute drives now all of a sudden become 40 to 45 minutes pretty easily. Um, you know, from Tampa International to Wesley Chapel at five o'clock, you know, that could take you as much as an hour if traffic's really crazy. Now that would be the extreme, but I just want to give you perspective because it is extremely congested, especially in that um, 275 to I-4 connection point. Um, you know, and we drive to Orlando to go meet friends or for conventions and things like that. And you saw it said an hour and 20 minutes. I live um, all the way near Indian Rocks Beach, so I'm an additional 40 minutes to that it regularly takes me three hours to get to Orlando because the traffic as you get close to Orlando is absolutely insane. So just keep that in perspective. Traffic is not great here. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Now the number four con is just like weather and in one of those respects that it is a pro and it's also a con. And I know you're like, Juan, how the heck does that happen? Well, the reality is we've all been dealing with a tremendous amount of inflation. That is not news to me, you, or anyone else, right? If you go get groceries, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you know, the government's out there telling you that inflation is subsiding. Um, and while that may be true in the categories they track, the categories that you and I historically track, you know, like housing, groceries, gas at the pump, the things that, map, you know, energy to, to, to cool and heat your home, those things are very expensive. And they are expensive here in the greater Tampa Bay area as well. Currently, our inflation sits at 5.7%, which is higher than the national average of 3.1%. That has come down. We were the highest in the nation at the same time last year. So we were really feeling it. And a lot of that had to do with housing because our housing prices have continued to soar, right? So that, that is just part of the perspective. Now, Redfin uh, just recently came out with an article, um, and we'll put that up here, where it said that the the average ho um, homeowner needs to make $115,000 a year to buy the median family home here in the United States. And like I showed you earlier, we're just a little bit north of the median um, home price right now. We're sitting at 430,000 here in, in Tampa. Um, you know, it's right around 431,000 in St. Pete. Clearwater's up as well as you can see here on this list, and the United States is right around four hundred eight thousand dollars on average. So, you know, not everybody's making one hundred and fifteen grand. So that can be a challenge, and you need to have your head on straight when you're making, you know, considering making that jump if you want to buy a home. Now, obviously, if you're going to buy a, a condo or a townhome that costs three hundred thousand dollars, you can make that adjustment for you. You know, we're talking about medians, which is the middle. You know that that's not really the average it's the the median is the average of the um, the activity um, average is the average of the high and low you know the the combination of, of, all, of all of them there so just keep that in perspective because you know the average single family home is going to cost you somewhere closer to five hundred thousand dollars i mean you can get new construction that is less than that you know we, we've done lots of videos on that so keep that in perspective it all depends on what you're trying to accomplish if you want to live by the beach it's going to cost you more money it's going to cost you more than the average so keep that in perspective if you move further out to the suburbs like wesley chapel um, apollo beach riverview brandon those prices definitely can come down a little bit you know even the parish area is a little bit more affordable the closer you get to the beach the more money you're going to spend number five on this list is something that i did not expect and i didn't hear anyone talk about and it was how spread out things are from each other. And what I mean by that is like, we just got done going through the driving map and talking about traffic, right? And how, you know, it's 30 minutes on a good day. But on average, this stuff takes 50 minutes to an hour to get to. Anytime I drive to Wesley Chapel, it takes me, and I, like I said, I'm close to the beach. It takes me like an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, sometimes an hour and 20 minutes to get home. And people will reach out and they're like, one, you know, I wanna move to Wesley Chapel because it's close to the beach. No, it's not. <laughs> it is a day trip all of a sudden. So keep that in mind for us to go to Tampa. There's this running joke, you know, if you live in the greater Tampa Bay area, people who live near the beach don't want to go over the bridge. You'll hear that all the time. I don't want to go over the bridge. And what they're referring to is the Howard Franklin Bridge or the Courtney Campbell. There are three bridges that go over there. You got the Gandhi to the south. You've got the uh, Howard Franklin Bridge, which is going um, over going a huge project right now where they're actually putting bike paths and, and runways over there, which is awesome. That bridge is seven miles long. It's huge, it goes over the bay, it's incredible. And the bridge to the north is the Courtney Campbell. And what you hear is people in Pinellas County, which is the, the Clearwater St. Pete area, say that they don't wanna go over the bridge to Tampa and vice versa. And we've got this you know total mix and argument going on. You've got Raymond James Stadium where 
Uh, the Buccaneers play football. That's, you know, in Tampa proper on, in West Tampa. And then if you want to see the Rays, you got to go over the bridge and down into St. Pete. And while it's only a 20 minute drive right now, that can be a 45 minute drive, 50 minute drive as well. And it, it, things are just really far spread apart. Okay, so like if you want to go to the lagoon communities out in Wesley Chapel, you're going to have to drive. If you want to go from Tampa to the beach, you're going to have to drive. And things are apart from each other. And I know, you know, everybody's like, well, I don't mind driving. And I get that. But the the area is, it, the sprawl is real, y'all. That's the best way I can put it. The sprawl. The sprawl is real. <laughs> so keep that in perspective. Um, you know, very few things are a short drive time away. There is only one Costco in all of Pinellas County, only one, and it's in Clearwater. So if you live in the south end of St. Pete and you want to go to Costco, you either have to drive all the way down to Sarasota or Manatee County, or you have to drive up to Clearwater, which is going to take 35 to 45 minutes, depending on traffic. And that is something to keep in perspective, right? We've got lots of grocery stores. Those are abundant. There's a Publix grocery store on almost every corner. I swear we have more of those than we have CVSs. So you don't have to worry about that. But like, you know, things like Costco, if that's important to you, keep that in perspective. Whole Foods, you know, we don't have those running rampant. There's one in St. Pete. Um, there's another one in Clearwater, in, in Clearwater specifically, and then you got to go over the bridge into Tampa. So these are things to keep in mind. I don't even know if we have a Trader, jo Trader Joe here in, in Pinellas County yet. So like you still got to go over to uh, Hillsborough County for that too. So like, I know this may not seem like a big deal to, to many, but like the sprawl is real. So keep that in perspective. All right, so I want to throw in this bonus and um, I'm not going to call this a pro or a con. I'm, and I'm going to be super transparent with you guys. I hold a real estate license, so I can't leave tell you whether something's safe or not. I know it sucks, it's the reality of it, but I can tell you where to find the information and that is how it can be extremely valuable and useful to you in this respect. I can also share public information, which I'm about to do. All right, so the first thing I want to say is how I feel living in the city because I can absolutely share that no one can tell me otherwise, right? And, and here's what I'd like you to know. I don't feel unsafe in Tampa. Um, I also don't poke my nose in places where I don't belong. And um, as you know, hopefully you heard earlier, you know, we moved from Detroit. You know, I, I grew up in Southwest Detroit um, and Detroit was not known for very good things at growing up as a child. We were, um, we ranked at the top for um, the most violent type of crimes in the United States when I was a kid growing up. So I understand what that looks like and how difficult things can be. And there are still areas in my home state, um, especially in the city of Detroit, that are not great. It's gotten a lot better over time. But I'm sharing that with you because I have never felt that way in Tampa. And that was part of the reason why we moved our family here. Right um, now, I, list, I lived in the western suburbs of Detroit as I got older. I got to, to move out of that, so that was never an issue in my life. Right, everywhere I lived and went to, that was not a problem. Tampa has 3.2 million people in it. There are going to people do people things, so I want to keep that in perspective. But I want to share some real valuable insights with you guys. There is an interactive crime map. You can go to Tampa.gov. I'm going to put the link down below. Um, we're going to show you this map here in a second, but it'll allow you to type in a, an address, a zip code, and you can see all of the recorded crime that is happening in that area. This is a really cool tool. I think most cities have this. Um, and here's what I always share with people. Don't take my word for it. Go look at that map and take, take a look. If you're looking at moving into a specific area, type in the zip code. You'll see all of the crime that has happened in that area, which is great. Then the other step that most people forget to do is to go look at where you live now and compare the two things together. Because oftentimes people will come to me and be like, our place is super safe. And then we'll look it up together and come to find out things are very similar, <laughs> right? And now I'm not saying that Tampa doesn't have its fair share of crime nor am I saying it has a lot of crime because it doesn't. And I'm about to show you this map here that um, I thought was awesome. So Texas A&M does this, this research um, and they figure out who, you know, crimes per capita and all those types of things too. But I want to share this with you because this was really interesting. Now this is from 2022 because 2023's um, year wrap up has not come out yet. So just sharing that with you. When we get it, we'll share that with you guys. I love sharing stuff like this. But it, it compares 
16 similar population size cities to the city of Tampa. And on that list, you've got Arlington, Aurora, Buffalo. Um, and Buffalo was recognized as supposed to be the hottest real estate market in the United States this year. Cincinnati, Cleveland, Honolulu, Miami, Minneapolis, um, New Orleans, New York, o Oakland, California, Orlando, which is, you know, a lot of people are con comparing Orlando versus Tampa. We made a full video. You guys can check that out up here. Um, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, Tampa, and Wichita. And as you can see, Tampa has some of the lowest crime rate um, compared to those cities. So I'm just sharing with you guys, this is public information. I'm not telling you it is safer or isn't. I'm just sharing the data with you so you can grab that perspective. This is a question we get asked all the time. Do your homework, right? You can easily find this information. Like I said, compare it to where you live because a lot of the times we get you know, this folk, this tunnel vision and we think where we live is the safest place or nothing happens and that's most likely probably not true. So keep that in perspective. And those maps are great. They show you if it was like petty crimes, larceny, like, um, you know, violent crimes, those types of things. I just think they're super helpful for you. I hope you got tremendous value out of today's video. If you did, do not hesitate to hit that subscribe button. Click that like button while you're down there as well. And if you know somebody considering moving to the area, share this video with them. They'll, you know, treat you like a superhero because this information can be extremely valuable. I know that there weren't channels like this when, when me and my family decided to relocate. And I had to do a lot of doctor Googling, you know, typing in Google, is this safe? What's the best areas? And now having these types of channels where you can really kind of do your diligence and get a lot of information, I think is extremely helpful. If you have any more questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below, including a link to my calendar so you can schedule time that's most convenient for you. I appreciate you guys watching. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.